Hi, welcome back. Uh, it's Harvey Lowe again, and I think we're probably nearing the last episode. I think we are at the last episode of the Millennium Falcon. And uh, off camera, I've got Dave Forrest and Sandy McCurry. Hi, Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Uh, and they're going to be making odd comments and smoking remarks as I finish my model here. Okay, so uh, in this last episode, first of all, I want to go over some final weathering techniques with you. Uh, if you've been watching the previous episodes, uh, we've apl I've applied the wash. Um, I might do a bit more today just to uh, finish up some pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to go on to some basic dry brushing. I know everyone knows a bit about dry brushing, but I do it a little bit different. And I'll show you the, t the, the technique that I use. So, just to finish off the last episode of the washes, again, um, this, this is, it's been a week since I've been playing around with the washes. And this uh, wash, uh, as I've mentioned in my previous episodes, is basically Humbrol uh, with Windsor Newton uh, 554. Um, uh, that's what I use as my wash, about maybe three to one thinner to, to a little drop of, of the Windsor Newton oil paint. Uh, and what that gives you is a nice patina look uh, to the wash. Now I've left this bottle for a week. This stuff has shelf life when you do your own and mix it in this 35 mil paint canister. Um, it, the, the longer you leave it, the more grittier it gets. Um, now, I did this wash off camera. Um, I'm going to apply a little bit more to show you what happens when you leave the wash to settle a bit after a week with your homemade, my homemade mixture. But let's just go over what the model looks like now. I've done the whole top side of the model. I'll flip it over. Uh, you can see that, Robert. That, that top side is the model that has now had a complete wash. And again, the wash is focused on uh, the the crevices over a gloss finish. You can do it over a semi-gloss, but this one I did over a future um, uh, coat of gloss floor wax, uh, and it's going only in the finishes, okay? So look at this one now. You can see the camera, he's, he's showing that off. Is that still a gloss finish on that hard, or is that? I've actually, good question. I've applied the, 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 the wash on this, and now I've applied a flat coat. Uh, on okay. top, yeah. and the flat coat I've used is the Model Master Acryl. Okay. Right, so it's it's pretty well done. This side, you'll notice the gloss is still on it, and I haven't done the wash. Right, yeah, yeah. look at the difference. Right, it's it's not as interesting or as depth as much depth as this side. And uh, here's another example of how you can use the washes. So let's just finish up a bit. Um, using washes and crevices is pretty basic modeling. Um, let's just take, flip it over, and uh, so this side you can see is very glossy because it's still got the floor wax on it. Shake up my whole mixture of the wash. Now you can see I've done the, the this gun here, and and as I mentioned before, now that this stuff is settled, let's say I just do this panel. Now it's going over a gloss surface. You could, you could apply this over a flat, if you have a, a flat surface and you have this wash that's been sitting for a week or more that's really gungy, it's going to give a very gungy look. Um, now this is going over a gloss finish and you can see how it's landing in the crevices. I've got the model tilted. But look, if I tilt it this way, the wash flows the other way. Now what you normally want to do is after you've applied this wash mixture, on a glossy surface. Keep it on a level surface and let it dry so it sinks into the crevices. Now, what you can, now I'm going to leave that set a bit for a sec, um, and then I'm going to wipe away the excess. But while I'm doing that and letting it dry, here's an example of some of the parts that I did. Can you see that zooming in? Um, here, Robert? Yes. See? That's done with a wash. And I, and I gave it a heavier wash because this is actually the landing gear of the Millennium Falcon. Now here's an interesting thing. This, this cover, which is for the, uh, the landing ramp in the, in the covered position, has a number, the wash is done. It's, it's a, got a flat coat on it. But then what I've done is I've taken, you see this little panel here? It looks a little darker. That panel is where you've left the, uh, the wash dry. And I haven't taken the wash off this panel at all. But I have taken the wash off these panels, letting it sit only in the recessed areas. So you can see if you leave this wash mixture I have on, it gives you this panel that's a lot dirtier, a lot more patina. That's how you can play around with the washes. How, how do you take it off? Like when you... I, t I take it off with the Humbrol thinner. 
Oh, I see. After you've yep. applied it? So After you I let, let it dry yep. at all? Let or? it dry a bit. Yeah, I usually let it dry about two hours, and then I go in and take it off. This one, I just left it. Just let it dry. Don't touch it. And you take it off with a brush, like a moistened brush? This one, I just leave the wash on like I did on yeah. this this yeah. Uh, this part here. I left it. Just left it. And it, it see, it, it dries that gritty look. Just like it looks wet here. Yeah. Leave it. Don't touch it. Uh, or, that's a good point. Or you can take your humbrol thinner, and then this one's dried a bit. I, I would let it dry a little more. But see, when I take this off, look, look at the difference. Yeah. Mm. Right? That's really clean. So That's really kind clean. of a filter. Yeah. It's like a gritty filter. It's a gritty filter. I don't know if there's any term for it. It's not a filter technique. It's a wash technique. But I've combined it so that you're using it um, as almost like a filter technique. And you're doing that kind of panel by panel? Is that yep. Now, I had a comment on, I think it was from Ralph. Hi, uh, hey Ralph. Um, he said, what happens if you take, instead of doing the st stroking this way, you can do it from the center? Y you can. You can do it from the center. And I'm just playing around with this, right? Um, it's all about effect. Start your streaking from the center of the panel and go out as opposed to down. It's entirely up to you. Um, but you can see there's also, there's a bit of grit there. Now, if I stipple it, see, it gives a different technique because it's still wet. Right? I'm just going to leave that because I actually think that's not bad. Yeah, looks, the stippling looks good. The stippling looks yeah, good. Yeah. And then I'm just going to clean up the edge and I leave it. Don't touch it. That's as quick as it is. Um, I could do a few more, give it a little more variation. Nice. But back to this one, that one hasn't changed at all. I didn't touch it. And you can see just using a wash gives you variation. Here's the landing, uh, what do you call landing ramp? It actually goes this way. Uh, but you can see the same thing. Look at all the different colors. Some of them are, are decals, uh, but others are not. You can see I've only used maybe two colors of the base Millennium Falcon, that beigey white. Um, and I haven't used any, even any grays. You can see the variation. Okay? Very nice. So I'm um, just going to let that take just a little bit more take a little bit more off here now again it's beginning to dry already you can see it's be and I'm gonna leave that stippling because I quite like it uh, so that's what I'm gonna finish off with the washes and just leave that uh, but basically again after you finished all that that's the bottom of the model um, that's what it should look like when you're done it's after a, a flat coat looks amazing. right after a flat coat yeah. the flat coat does makes, it makes it yeah. it does yeah. it really it yeah. really makes it because yeah. yeah. it yeah. blends yeah. everything in you could apply an overall filter with a you know like a 0.5 nozzle and but I, I don't want to I want to leave it start right um, so there and we'll finish that off camera yeah. now by the way guys this model has lights these huge little light bulbs oh yeah, yeah. you want to mask those off with your screen oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right otherwise what's the, the lights yeah. well, what's the point right <clears throat> now nice. some people were asking about uh, Dave I saw your BT7 and your exhaust um, here's the exhaust on the, so this panel fits here, by the way, guys, that's your battery pack for your lighting system. Now you can zoom in there, Robert, you see this, these streaks, as I mentioned earlier, I went back over these streaks a little bit more after the washes with this X, X19 oh, smoke. smoke yeah. Now I did the smoke, like I thinned it with the X20 thinner, yeah. and then it's very subtle. So you add a couple of drops of Tamiya Black. And you, you just get your airbrush and, right, and you get that. I needed to do it again because after I did the wash and all that, um, it, it needed a little bit more ac accent to yeah, it. Yeah. But you can see. Now, it's funny. I went to the club, and, and IPMS club, and people were asking me why did the streaks go this way. I, and, and I'm not a sci-fi or space expert. That's, but, how, that's how it looks on a studio model. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. And some of the guys said, well, science fiction, if you're in the atmosphere of a planet, then it, it might go this way. Anyways, I have no idea why it wouldn't go this way. But that's the way it looks like on the studio model. I did have some conversations with some sci-fi guys, and they said that... Uh, there were several versions of the Millennium Falcon. Even though they're in the same scale, uh, there's different versions which, uh, when you put them side by side with this kit, with the fine molds one, they're actually different in size. Uh, but there's, it's still 70 second. I didn't know that. So that's basically, you can see a little bit, This the washes have been done, but there's no dry brushing on this yet. Not yet. 
So we'll just put this away for a bit. We finished up with that and we'll go on to dry brushing in a minute, okay? Okay, so dry brushing. Uh, the, uh, just chatting off off camera with Sandy. Sandy, you made a comment about dry brushing. Yeah, dry that? brushing used to be, I remember years ago, it was, everything was dry brushed, but it seems to have fallen out of favor the last little while, but it still has a great effect to you know, pick up detail. Do, do you still use it on oh, your yeah. armor kits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, uh, do you still use dry brushing? A little bit, no. yeah. You don't use dry brushing? Really? There you go, guys. Uh, two two completely yeah. different. Uh, I, I, I do. Um, some guys don't like the heaviness of it, um, but I... Now, here's the thing. Here, okay, so the difference. This is um, what I, how I use a dry brush. This is the Winsor Newton uh, oil paints that you can buy at art stores. Uh, this one is titanium white. Be careful. Don't get the other whites because some of them have metallics in them, but uh, the titanium white is a pure white. From, from Windsor Newton. I usually put uh, a drop, a, a little pea-sized drop on there. And this is where some people say you're breaking the chemical rules of modeling. Um, so this is a bit of the beige base that I used on the model. And you can literally take acrylic paint and put a couple of, and mix it with oils. Oh. It, it, it actually, you crazy? It, yeah. it works. It, it, it actually works. I don't have much in this bottle here. Now I'm using the beige oh, in here. It up like, oh my yeah, God. and mix it. You can, so that's an oil paint with an acrylic. Mm. And be, now why am I using uh, this, this oil paint? You see the, the little gummy consistency? Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Um, and if you want to really paint Mr. Chemistry uh, class, um, I can add some uh, uh, oil paint retarder. I think it's called Japan Dry or something. I can't remember. But I didn't bring any, but you can add a few drops of that stuff yeah, in yeah. here so that your, your this mixture remains moist. Mm -hmm. Now, I put it on cardboard so that I, you can take a bit of the, the moisture oil. out. Yeah, of, of the linseed oil yeah. out. But you can do, you can add that Japan dryer stuff to it or anything else to kind of slow the drying. Pro probably got that name wrong. But this case, I'm just using basically these two colors. And yes, I've been using this technique for years, uh, and it works. So then you got your your take a flat brush. Mm -hmm. uh, now be careful. Like this is kind of mixed already. You see how gummy it is. That's what you want. It, that's exactly what you want. But then you mm -hmm. want. Yeah. Most of it off. Take it mostly off. Yeah. yeah. Like take it really off. Yeah. Because if you don't, it looks absolutely horrible. Yeah. And it doesn't even look like you have any on the brush. But now comes the moment where like you go into some of these details. You just drag it across. You just drag it across. Yeah. yeah. See, it's it may be hard to pick up on the camera. It's easier to put too little on totally. Yeah. Then totally. build it up. Build it up. Otherwise, if you put too much on, it's horrible. Now let's go in this area where there's dark. You can see it here. See, just just a little. Look, look yeah, at the difference. It picks it up. Picks it it totally picks it up. Yeah. And it's an oil paint mixed with acrylics. That's what I like. Look at how how fine that is. Well, what's the in this particular case? What's the advantage of, of other than altering the color? Is that really why you're just putting in the? Because it's an easy way for you to change the color a little bit. Or is there another reason why? You're you mean to use the the Windsor Newton? Well, to to put in the Tamiya acrylics. Um, I like, uh, well, you could use just the oils on themselves, mm -hmm. but because I want to keep the color range. Well, it's really, it's color. It's color. It's, color change it's a change in yeah. color. You just you, want to keep it within the same palette. That's exactly right, it. Right. Same palette, same range. I got gotcha. you. Could you use these on its own? Absolutely, you could. So if you found the right oil color yes. by itself, you could use that by yeah. itself? Yes. The only reason why you're doing this with the white is just to get that color. Very same. good comment. Absolutely, gotcha. yes. Right? Um... You do your highlights there. See? Just do. Now, what you can do is you can just don't don't always go in the same direction. Go go this way. Go that way. Go in a cross hatch, um, and you know you're only picking up the details. I'm going very light, and there's very little paint on this paintbrush. Almost none. You don't want to overdo it, right? You want to leave that, look at that subtle just effect. The, the it's just picking yeah, it up. Yeah. Less is best. Yeah, yeah. And Sandy, you're right. It's about um, layering. Yeah. See? Build it up. Build it up. Nice. We're going to take it over in this area here and build it up even more. See? Yeah. It's really built up. So it's just where the light would catch it. Yeah. Yep. That's, I mean, I don't mind dry. I, I don't like the heaviness effect of it, mm. but in this case, that's no, what I want. Yeah. Picks up the little detail. Picks the, up the yeah. little details. Okay. Oh, by the way, we were talking the other day about the, 
model parts on this kit. Look, that looks like a that looks like a one seventy second Panther <laughs> mantlet oh, yeah. right there. Yeah, I see it right now. Since since we're looking at this, this this is that like a Matilda or something sort of rear engine deck. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Here, yeah. look at this one, Robert. Have a look at that. That that looks like a a Yada Panther. We've seen some tiger engines. There's tiger details somewhere. there. King tiger de details. I mean, there. we're talking about that as we're dry brushing. Yeah. Now you'll notice when you're dry brushing. Look at this one. Yeah. The effect is is more uh, stark when you have a darker background. Yeah. yeah. See. And this is an old brush. Yeah, you want to use an old. You want to use yeah, an old yeah. brush with the bristle. I yeah. I find yeah. because if the brush is too flat, it doesn't we'll pick, we'll, yeah, it doesn't yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the paint and spread it nicely as this. And that's all I want to do. I don't want to do any more. See, it doesn't pick it up as much on the lighter colors. No, it's no con not so much contrast. It's not much contrast, right? No, oh, it's great. Right? Yeah. Wow. Just little details. Now, what I'll do is I'll finish it off camera, and uh, but by the time you get this effect here with the washes, um, we could, you know, you saw in the previous issue I was using some pencils uh, with the the rust, right? And if you think that's too stark, you can use, you can take a tissue and just, you can just, well, this is a paper towel, but you can use a Q-tip and just kind of wipe it with your finger. You can even wipe it with your finger to tone it down, see? Let's wipe it, see the paint on my, there's paint on my, stop fingering your model, there you go, I'm fingering, oh, I'll use this finger this so, applies, so this don't offend anybody now. This applies it. to regular aircraft as well. Oh, absolutely. Armor. You can use it in any oh, of this yeah. technique for anything. Absolutely, and I just, I, I, I personally just love the oils with acrylics. Yeah. Um, yeah. At first some guys said, don't do that, um, but I've been using this oil and acrylic uh, dry brush technique for about 15 years, and it's, it's still, now, the only thing with this using the oils, it, it takes a little bit longer to yeah, dry. Yeah, so how long does it take to dry? Oh, I'd leave it for like two days, okay. two, three days. Um, you could overcoat it, but I find if you overcoat it, it kind of takes it a bit away, mm -hmm. right? So, see, you can use your, oh yeah, keep using my middle finger there, right? Just, you could take, you, you could take some of the, I've actually taken some of this mixture and put it on my finger and rubbed it on the, and then just rubbed it. Don't even use a brush. Finger, with finger painting. Then. Finger painting. Yeah. Finger right. painting models with Harvey Lowe. Yeah, that's right. Right, okay. Gone full, gone full circle. Full circle yeah. from when I was a child yeah. to when I'm a child. Back to finger painting. Yeah, All right. That, that, uh, this, is the, this is the upper surface, right? The, this the is the mat, upper surface. The matte finish you have on that? Yes. All, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Dave. Yeah. Always do this technique on a matte, flat finish. A wash goes on a gloss finish. Dry brushing goes on a matte finish. And filters I like on a semi-gloss finish, but that's just me. Those are my rules, right? Now you don't have to do the whole thing because you guys will be thoroughly bored. But this, let's let's just for for chat, let's just overdo this. That's pretty stark. Now, if that's what you want, fine. Yeah, but that's good. almost that what. Pretty good to me. Right now, if I take the last step of this, if I take a a pea size of this without mixing the beige in. It's, it's extremely stark. And Dave, this is what you said, I'll use a different brush. But this is pure white right out of the tube. Get all that off. Now this stuff will really be, this will really be stark, right? Like maybe a dark area like this. Like maybe it's hard to see, but that's really, yeah, that's true. really stark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really stark and yeah. just use your thumb to, but if that's what you want, see just a little bit, Goes a long way. Just a yeah, little. Just a few areas, highlight areas. Just to highlight in the whites, but don't like like you mentioned in your BT episode. Don't don't cover it with too many techniques. But this one with pure white, this is one where you just do well, a think, little. Yeah, I think in this case it, it makes there's a there's a good case for dry brushing because of all of the, the yeah. details, yeah, right? Yeah, very so fine detail. You won't see the it, brings it, out. it does bring it out, right, yeah, guys? Yeah. Okay, so I'll stop there and I'll just show you. Just again on this one, just to finish up. So, because I've done the smoke wash here, this is where dry brushing will really stand. See, just a little bit. That's white, and look already how stark it is. That's just like two or three coats, and 
if, if you think it's too stark, go back over with your custom acrylic beige uh, and go back over this and do another uh, round of dry brushing with your beige and uh, oil mix to tone it down. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll do this off camera. So basically, the, the, the Robert will uh, prepare the last episode, then I'll finish the whole model, uh, and basically I'll do a bit more of the, the pencil techniques to bring out a few more details. And that'll be it. And then the last episode, we'll flick off the lights and turn the lights on this thing and see how it looks like with all the, the lights, uh, like a Christmas tree. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, and uh, we'll do a bit more uh, on the, uh, the final episode, looking at the final model, and that we'll call that the final episode for the Million Falcon. And the next project that I do will be back to a tank. Uh, and we're thinking about the Tamiya Sheridan, so look forward to that one. So thanks again, guys, and uh, we'll see you Hi soon. there, I'm Harvey Lowe, and I'm with Dave Forrest, uh, Garage Studio Modelers, right? And this will be the last episode that we're going to do on the Millennium Falcon. Um, I forget what episode we're at, but uh, today I'm just going to go over uh, the finished model, and I'm just going to be taking off um, some of the masking on the, on the canopy and clear parts. And uh, I, I haven't seen it lit up, so we're going to light it up and Ooh, uh, very nice you got you we can turn the lights off in this garage yeah there you go there's switches yeah so, so uh it's been i think about five up maybe a maybe a month and a two months on and off for this build and doing it with you dave yeah about right? that. yeah we started this in what early the summer yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah just that, yeah. slightly before christmas uh it's been a fun build and if you follow all the episodes folks uh we went through the same uh uh, techniques of building a model, but a little bit different here and there, given it's a sci-fi model from washes uh, to the pencils to everything. Very impressive. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, it looks really good. You, you have a Millennium Falcon model, don't you? I bought the 144th scale Bandai one mm -hmm. um, because of yeah, I, because of what I saw here. So, oh, real? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you have a Star Destroyer too. And I do have a Star Destroyer, the lighted one. Yeah. Oh, you have a lighted I one. What lighted scale one. is that? I think it's one five thousand. Wow, it's yeah, it's it's like that. Okay, big. It's not it's not as big as you might think, yeah. but yeah. yeah so I'm, well, maybe we'll do that on camera one day. But okay. But yeah, but this this turned out Thank stunning, you. stunning. Yeah. Well, it's for a client, and uh, like yeah, I say, the I client will be very happy. With yeah, this. I don't build a lot of sci-fi models. I, I'm, I I have some Star Trek ones, but maybe it's now pushing me into this realm of. Yeah. But this is this is kind of like a flying tank. It is, isn't it? Yeah, really? and, and like it, it is like the, in terms of the weathering totally. and all the techniques yeah. and you know even the, like the way it looks on camera and whatnot. It's yeah, uh, yeah it's really yeah. really neat. Yeah, it was, done. it's uh, thank you, thank you. And, and I see uh, you've got some of the masks off. Yeah, I wanted to take some more off as well, which is I find the fun part, eh? Don't you? That it's mm. like one of the final. It's putting the one of the most off. terrifying parts. Yeah, <laughs> of building. yeah, yeah. Oh, was building, your, uh, did it bleed through? Or, or, did it? Yeah. 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 But so, if you do things yeah, right. Yeah, but he's, he's taking them off around the gun port there. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. This, again, I like playing with my, I like moves. Did, did this turn in real life? This moves. Yeah, I think it did turn. It's, it's upside down. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's not upside down. It's fine. Well, well, uh, I guess we'll go through with it, Dave, and you'll yeah. be off uh, making yeah. your usual side yeah, so, comments. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll leave it uh, over, right. over to you, and we'll go from the Okay, so we're uh, outside in Toronto in a blissfully winter day. It's, uh, I don't know, minus something, 10, 10. Minus 8? Minus 8 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Which is Fahrenheit, I don't know what it is for you uh, Yanks. But anyways, so we're in Toronto, we're in, we're in Dave's backyard, and uh, this is like what the model looks like on the planet Hoth. Is that nice? Yeah, this is a flyover See Hoth. See that? It's flying over. It, yeah. So this is actually a Geek Studio Modelers <laughs> episode today. And not Garage Studio Modelers. See that? Ooh, it moves. Right? So look at that. You take the snow and snow. put a little snow, like yeah, snow yeah. effect on the model. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See? It looks great. Isn't that great? Yeah. Bring it in a show. It'll probably melt. Yeah. Wasn't it? Empire Strikes Back all em over again. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Right? I love it. I'm actually glad I'm married because if I was single, I don't think anybody would go out with me if I did this, but what the heck? Yeah, you wouldn't put this on your Tinder profile, I don't think. Okay, so that's what it looks like in its natural environment. And we'll go inside and have a closer look at the details uh, from the wonderful winter blistery land of Toronto, Canada.
Okay, so we're just, Robert's just going to go over the model right now, and after a process of weathering, and you can watch all the episodes, the model's basically finished, um, and I guess I'm, I could have kept going. I think Dave and I had conversations, when do you stop, right? I could have done more filters, I could have done more pencil work. Um, I didn't do uh, hairspray technique. Believe it or not, for example, the you see the little decal here, Robert, right there? That's not hairspray, That that's the decal. And so I thought, well... Let, let's stop it there, because after a while, right, Dave? After a while, yeah, you can too, overdo it. You overdo it, and yeah. I thought it's busy enough. There is there is a lot of diminishing returns on on weather yeah. and whatnot. So I think so. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, pretty happy with it. I'm gonna basically. F oh, by the way, if you have this model, folks, uh, these are photo etch. You have a choice of photo etch or um, injection. Uh, I guess the kit parts for the this vent. Um, be careful if you use a photo etch because. If you flip the model over and you're handling it, you can punch through these photo etch. This um, lid comes off. Take the lid off. This accesses the wiring and the, uh, uh, I guess this this box. I'm not an electrician. What do you call these things? Uh, the a light box or yeah, I guess or a light box. Junction box. box junction or? box. Whatever. There's there's three um, AAA batteries in there, uh, and the whole thing comes out. So. And, and what I did, if it helps for, for you guys who build this, I, I put little labels on the wires so where they go, so that when you're when you're wiring them up, they, th this is one of these models that comes everything together. You just plug it in. You don't need to have soldering. You just plug the wires into <coughs> the box, and it works. And I think it's fabulous because I'm I'm not very good at this lighting stuff, and it's basically plug and play. It fits in here. Be careful when you put it in here that you don't get the wires tangled. Uh, and above all else, if you leave this, this has to come off. When you flip it over, don't hold it there. And then, of course, this box will pull out if you flip it over. Um, so just, if you do buy this model, just be careful when you're displaying it on the underside, it snaps in. And, and I noticed when you were, like, working on it and you flip it over to get to the underside, you always had, like, a nice soft towel. Yes, it, right? yes, yes, absolutely, because yeah. there's so many of these details that are fiddly and can get bust. In fact... I busted one of these guys here and I put it back on super glue with uh, a zap kicker and a little flat coat and it's fixed right so under the underside same thing I gotta hold that lid right now here on the underside you have an option in this kit of having the loading ramp down the gear down right there's one two three four of them I didn't bring it with me but you also have the um, the gear doors in a closed position because these guys actually they, just pop, out? they pop out wow. yeah these pop out right Bandai. I love so, Bandai. you love Bandai now if, if you are doing this you have to sand these mounts otherwise it's tough to get out but yeah isn't that great you have a ability now every time you open one of these up there's the light bulb there's one there there's one I think there's three here I can't remember um, and it'll light up the <laughs> Nice. Right? Nice. So that's the bottom, kind of the same. Now, it, you may not notice it, but when I was doing the final flat finish, uh, I actually didn't clean my airbrush as best as I could. And I was doing the yellow band on my uh, Italian bomber. And uh, because it was a little in the cup and I was using a flat coat, it actually came out as a very, very light yellow filter. And it worked. Oh, wow. and, and, and I started you might you can't see it, it's a bit yellow here and I thought that's not bad and I just kept going right so sometimes if you if you have a mistake keep going uh, because the end is not always as dire as you think it is um, so this has a final flat coat by the way I did remove um, some of the canopy mass from the gun position here right so that's done already so I did it off camera and we will now you can see the, air br the dry brushing with oil seems to bring out the details. Uh, and you can do a flat uh, a brush to, it doesn't take you long at all. Very, 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 very yeah. quick. Yeah, the flat coat really makes it, does. makes it come together. It, it makes it come together. Some people would argue you semi-gloss, whatever. It looks good. It looks fine. It looks good. So now, when you guys are applying canopy masks, I use the, what's it called, kabuki? What is it? Kabuki? Kabuki? No, that's an opera. <laughs> Oh. What is it called? You know what I mean. The yellow tape. Tamiya tape. The yellow Tamiya tape. Um, you can also use frog tape, painter's tape. I find that works well. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah the, actually, the frog tape, the, the the yellow tape that they have is the yep. same. Seems to be. Seems to be the same. Seems to be the same. Yeah. Yep. And the frog tape is is a thicker, a wider diameter, so you can do bigger yeah. cuts to it. Cheaper too, I think. It, oh. Yes. Um. But you know, so I actually use frog tape for this. Now, when you're doing these little canopies, this kit does have. I've seen it. It has an aftermarket masking set. I didn't buy it, but you have to cut the pieces and fit them on if you don't have the masking set for this. But they're all, it's like, well, I guess there's some curves on there for that. There's a bit, yeah. So I did that. Now, when you're using the, the tapes, as Dave said, obviously you gotta paint the interior, but when when you start applying your, your masking tape onto a clear canopy, make sure that you spray the, the remaining uh, ribs in the interior color, right? So if you do an aircraft, it would be interior green, because you could actually see it when you yeah. remove the tape. And so this case, I, I think I used black, I can't remember. Um, but you see, I started to, to take, by the way, I find these little tweezers, I got these at a stamp convention. And, and I like these because when you do, it grips really strong. So always look for these little tools at other places where you might not think that they would have. This came from a stamp uh, uh, convention. I bought a, I got a pin vise from a, uh, a watchmaker and the pin vise is as fine as you can get so anyways so if you're going to take these off we'll take these off live on camera when you're using a number 11 br uh, blade make sure you don't obviously scrape the the canopy itself or there'll be a big scratch in there if there is you could polish it out but you start removing it with the blade and like i say i use these guys because it really grips you can use your regular tweezers uh, these are from Master Tool, but again, the I find that this doesn't grip. This one's off already. It doesn't grip as well as this guy does. So, see, this is this is the the challenging part. Now, when it comes off, see all this this stuff, this paint left over. You just blow it off, and it'll come off. Um, I use a um, computer duster can to get it all off. So just take it off there, and uh, you can begin. It's hard to see, but you can begin to see the interior which is really cool and make sure that I did do a half decent job on it, right? Um, see the little panel? It's pretty crisp uh, because of the masking tape. And we'll just get a little more here. This is the part that I do like. This is the reveal. The reveal, yeah. So see how, so you see it comes off, right? And these, these are just paint flex it's not anything on the canopy the, you also have these sets that you can find I forget the company they give you <clears throat> pre-cut um, tape in various sizes circular angled curved um, I bought one I haven't got the set in yet and you can use it when you don't have a masking set and you want different um, shapes and sizes to put on the comp any complex curves I also use a mirror when I cut these with an X-Acto blade so the, the cut is crisp. Mm -hmm. And of course, for these this little round guy here, I use that beautiful shadow cutter, Dave. Oh, the circular cutter. The yeah. circular by shadow, is that what, they, I think it's called you shadow. Get, yeah, and there's one by display, I think. Yeah, well. yeah, I, it's better than the regular compass, one? compass yeah, ones. That, that they're not cheap, but I love them. No, yeah, if you're doing if you're doing circular masks or oh. rondelles or circular like this, it, Fantastic. They are. I'm using it to uh, for the uh, my Italian bomber. So that's coming off. It's it's getting there now. It actually looks like something. Yeah. Get the front one off. See, it's the. Look at that! Wow. Right. That was really coming to life. Yeah, you can actually see the figures inside. So now sometimes they do rip, but it doesn't matter. It'll all come off. Just be careful not to scratch the canopy. And, right, and I got two more to go, and then we light her up like a Christmas tree, right? Very nice. I like models with lights, so put that aside, put that aside. Can you see the detail there, Robert? See the figures? Yeah. And you can actually see inside. The ribs on this one very clearly. Mm. So I didn't use black. I forgot I used a, a gray color and you can definitely see them through the ribs. So do paint the interior color first. A couple of tips when you're using these uh, 
uh, canopy masks, I find that when you put the mask on, spray a light coat around um, to get the seal in, right? I see. To get it all in. That way, if you leave it, it might lift. Uh, and I find uh, enamel paint's really good for that. Um, they're, they're, they, they get on and they stay on, unlike an acrylic. And then you go over it with your camouflage acrylic paints. I find even on some models, they have even the tester <clears throat> spray can flat white. That stuff is great for large canopies on aircraft. Just to get the tape settled in and it won't lift, then you do your painting. Now when you put the tape on, are you burnishing it down to make yep. sure it's... Yeah. Yep, I have burnishing tools. Finger's always good. Uh, but yes, I use burnishing tools. And then of course, when you've got a large surface like this, sometimes I apply the tape on. Now that's tricky, risky. You take the number 11 and you follow the canopy line. Just better make sure that you get it right. Yeah, if you miss, then you're if you miss, scratching your Right, because otherwise, if, if you don't have the mask, you have to measure that. That's a pretty complex angle. Yeah. So you just go light with the blade, let the blade carry the weight. Um, oh, was that, sorry, is that what you did here? Yeah. Okay. I actually, okay. Put, I actually put tape on, and then I, I cut sure. around it. Yeah, okay. That's the only way, yeah. unless I had the masking set. Yeah. Well, you can do it off, but it's, you know, on a, a separate, but it takes a lot of measuring to do that, and it is a hobby after all. Okay, so we're done with that. The model's finished. Uh, it's got a little Toronto snow here still. And uh, now, I haven't done this yet, so this is the first time I'm seeing the lighting. Uh, we're just switch for your garage. Oh, yeah, let me, uh, let me get to that. Yeah, so now, while Dave's getting the light, these, this, if you have the model, there's four switches here, and they control various parts of the model. For whatever reason, Bondi has one switch with an empty, there's an empty socket here somewhere on the back. I don't know why they haven't, it's a spare. Um, why would it kill the lights? Yeah. And we can kill these lights. Now, we, we, I'm gonna, there's only three of these I need to click on, but I'll click on all four because I can't. Oh, and this, by the way, this is the tape to protect the window in the back. Take that off. Okay. And we put, this is some weird plastic that, the light goes through. Now, I again, the first time I've seen this, look at this, eh? You notice? There's, there's these two little things here. I don't know if it's just got light shining through. Like, on purpose, right? Mm. Unless I missed a part, but I don't... Maybe I did. Um, okay, so that's on. The lights are on. Oh, yeah, you got landing lights? See that? <clears throat> <clears throat> that looks great. See the, can you see the landing lights on there? Oh, hey, cool. Yeah. That's fantastic. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Very, very cool. And I think I use the landing yeah, ramp. You can, yeah, the ramp. Is, there a, is yeah. the ramp lit up? Yeah, it is. It looks great. Holy crap. That's fantastic. Isn't that great? What about, is there anything in the cockpit? Yeah, oh. Is there? Yeah, there is. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention for the cockpit? If you get, oh yeah, right. Yeah. You see that backlight there? Yeah. For, for those of you who buy the kit, there's a part that is the back wall of the, of the cockpit. And I learned this off, off another guy on YouTube. Sorry, I forget the channel. But if you put the part in as it comes with the kit, it's only a little sliver to allow the light through. So he said, Cut the part in half and throw half of it out. That way you get the whole shining beam in the back there. Oh, I see. Yeah. As opposed to a little sliver of yeah. light, then you don't <clears throat> see anything. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool. That looks really good. The landing lights look fantastic. You know what I always worry? Is when I'm building the model, did I get the wires right? And <laughs> Because once you put the wires in, you can't get back at them. To... But they're all snap wires. So that's I'm what the... I think. Yeah, eh? I think I'll put that on the on the table and kind of right now we've got a cabinet with all of our like you know the the wedding gifts we I'll get rid of those for my wedding and I'll put this in the cabinet instead. I think that will be way better, eh, Dave? Well, to be honest, I'm surprised yeah. you haven't done that already. Oh yeah, well I'll do it this afternoon. So uh, there's some boxes, cardboard. We can I borrow a cardboard box, put all my wife's sure. Wedding yeah, pictures. There's, there's plenty here. Right. I think this would look much better. So what do you think, folks? Okay, so there you go. We'll turn the lights back on. For sure. And I think 
That's cool. Let me look at the cockpit. I haven't even seen the cockpit. And here, I'll turn it around, Robert, so you can see. Oh, yeah. Cockpit's all lit up. So there you go, folks. Bondi's kit's fantastic. I think, Dave, you mentioned that it's about $500 Canadian or something. Yeah, if you can, if you can find yeah. it for that. Yeah. Okay. And there you go, folks. So just ending off, it was a very enjoyable project. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. And I think the only concluding remark I'd make is it, I, I wouldn't be too fussed about, oh, it's a sci-fi and... You know, I, I, I don't really like sci-fi, so maybe I'll pay less attention. No, I think that you can learn from different genres and different types of models. And, 100%. Yeah, different. So I applied the armor techniques of weathering to this thing, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And I guess my next one, uh, going back to something more familiar, I'll be working finally on a... Um, like a, one of those snap kits that go right together. I'll be working on the uh, uh, beautiful Tamiya Sheridan in 135th. Thank you, Dave, for buying that for me for my birthday. So that'll be uh, the next one I'll be doing is uh, watch for the garage studio models on the 135th Tamiya Sheridan. So thank you very much for watching. Leave some comments. My apologies if I don't get to them quickly, but I do answer all comments. Uh, Dave and I will uh, be back with a few other episodes on garage studio model. Look for one on uh, Panzer Gray, Dave's got his BT-7, which he just finished, uh, and uh, we're, we did as well one on uh, mixed media versus um, out-of-the-box builds. So stay tuned for all those, and uh, thanks again for watching.